Okay, so in this video we're going to continue with the theme of data representation and we're going to look at character sets. One of the craziest things about computer science is trying to get your head around the concept that all computers can ever see is binary code, ones and zeros. So everything that we create, images, word documents, sound, videos, everything ends up being just ones and zeros in a computer. computer. That is quite a difficult concept to get your head around, but hopefully by the end of this video you'll understand a bit more how documents are created. So the computer system needs some sort of method of converting what we're doing and what we can see as humans into their computer code, into their language, ones and zeros. So everything that we create is eventually going to end up as a string of bits which can be processed by the computer. In this particular case, binary can be used to represent individual characters such as letters, question marks, exclamation marks and so on. Right, so you may already know, but most documents are created out of words. Now each word is made up as a string of characters. So a three letter word like and is three letters, obviously three characters. You can also have things like digits from zero to nine, uh, symbol, symbols like the question mark and pound sign and euro sign and so on. Now a string of characters can have uppercase and lowercase letters and numbers in. So this would be like really useful for passwords for example. Computers are unable to process characters directly as they can only, only say zeros and ones. So every letter that you type in on your keyboard, the computer needs a way of understanding what that actually is in binary code. So the way the computer does this is by using what we call a character set to convert the characters into binary and back again. Character sets are collections of characters that a computer recognizes from their binary representation. So imagine like a big index of loads of different symbols and then a binary value next to them. Now these character sets will literally have all the possible characters available with their corresponding decimal value and then obviously the conversion into whatever the binary representation is. The character sets also contain special characters, for example spacebar, en enter and delete. Okay, so what process actually occurs on the computer? When you press a button on your keyboard, it sends a binary signal to the computer telling it which key you pressed. The computer then uses the character set to translate the binary code into a particular character. By this stage, you should have watched the videos about units and understand how bytes are a set of 8 bits and how big a megabyte is and a gigabyte is and so on. If you haven't, it might be a good idea to go and watch that video now. If you have and you have a basic concept, a basic concept of this, now this bit should, in theory, be quite easy for you. So the number of bits that are required for what we call the ASCII character set is actually 7 bits and this will make sense a little bit more now. So the biggest number that we can create from 7 bits, if you remember when we've done binary conversion before, if you draw it out into the table, starting at 1 and doubling it each time, the biggest number that you can get from 7 bits should be 128. So there's 128 possible characters that we can have in the ASCII character, character set. This means that we only need 7 bits. However, it makes it much more easy if we can use one full byte to display each character. Therefore, we literally put an extra bit at the start so that it fits nicely into one byte. This would always be a zero so that we don't go any higher than 128. If you look at the small diagram to show some examples of these characters and what their binary value is, it might be a little bit more clear. If you take a look at this ASCII table here, what we're looking for really is the bits in green. So if you go across and find where the capital A is, for example, the number next to it is 65 in decimal. So the blue number, 65, is a capital A as a character. 
So essentially what the computer is doing is it's when it reads a capital A, it converts that character into a decimal value, which is 65, converts this into binary and stores it as one byte of data. And then the computer can process it and know which letter has been typed. It just repeats this process with every keyboard press that you put in. Okay, now what we'll find is that the ASCII character set is great if you're English or American. We can use all of the letters that we want and we shouldn't have any problems. However, if you study GCSE French or Spanish or A-level even, you might need to type up some of your essays and need to use, and need to use characters that aren't in the English alphabet. Therefore, we have something called the extended ASCII character set. This is used for European languages like French and Spanish, where you might need to use an extra character. Therefore, we need to use the full 8 bits. You can't just use 7 like before, where we only had 128 characters. This time we need extra characters, so we're going to use the full 8 bits within the byte. That means that the first bit could actually be a 0 or a 1, depending on which character you want to display. This particular example of the extended ASCII table shows some of the other characters that you might use in the other languages. Finally, the last character set that we need to look at is called Unicode. Now the giveaway is the first three letters, Uni, which is from Universal, which means we use it worldwide. Now this basically is when we want to have things with different alphabets completely, likely, like Greek, Russian and Chinese, where they use completely different characters. Okay, In this particular case, we can have two full bytes worth of data, or even more. It can go from 16 bits to 32 bits of binary codes, just for one character. The reason why we need this is, you know, certain operating systems or pieces of software you need to be able to run them in different languages so we need to have documents that are saved in unicode so that they can be displayed in different countries for example say you were going to make a refrigerator and it had a digital readout on it if you were going to sell that in china then you need to be able to have unicode character set so that all of the um, messages that come up on the screen can be understood in their language as well now with Unicode, you've got over a million different possible characters that we can use. On this diagram, you can see plenty of examples of characters from the Unicode character set. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe. Bye.